Namaste Angels. I'm here to do another client reading. And this um, young lady had asked a bunch of questions, which is fine. I decided ultimately that they were all basically like, you know, are we really a divine union? And if so, you know, in what direction are we going in was, you know, at the end of the day, what the questions were asking. So, um, I was thinking about that as I was shuffling the cards. They have not, sh they have not yet shown me that at all, actually. Um, what they've shown me is that somebody here, and maybe I'm being shown more positive stuff now because I wasn't, you know, I'm not giving up on the reading. I expect to see something different um, when I leave the cards. Now I'm being shown the King of Water, so that's more positive. Um, the King of, because the King of Water is trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. And we are to open our minds and our hearts when we're embodying the energy of the King of Water to those around us. And trust that we are in trustworthy um, relationships and getting trustworthy advice also heartfelt advice, and we're, we may even be doing charity work, which to me is love, you know, sharing love with other people when we do charity work. So that's positive. Um, however, <laughs> prior to that, just now, I shuffled repeatedly in the angel tarot to ego or the devil. In clearing my Egyptian tarot, um, should I decide to use it, this gentleman that's under arrest. In my Universal Love Oracle, Fear. This one's positive. It's called Options. This is from the Lovers... I'm um, sorry. This is from the... Um, Life Purpose Oracle. And from the Romance Angels, Free Yourself. By the time I got this, I, by the time I saw, which was, I guess, second, the man that was under arrest, I felt like somebody was married and trapped, like, in a relationship, or feeling like they were trapped in a relationship. So we'll see. Um, but we have seen the... This is about being bound... Quite often, uh, the devil being bound to something or feeling bound to something, stuck, um, and of course, somebody with their somebody holding your hands behind your back and you know cuffing them would also give you the sense of being bound. So I guess that's why I thought about that, and that was before I ever saw fear or free yourself or anything. All right, so let's get started with. Ego, an Archangel Jophiel, a false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things, negative or fear-based thoughts. So somebody may be a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, opening now to the Queen of Water. So now we've seen the King and the Queen, um, and maybe they each have some water, too. So they could be like a couple that's appearing here of water signs. The Queen of Water is tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. She's also a Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. So somebody here, maybe because it's a court card, um, a water sign as well. Ego is back. Opening to the three of fire. Abundance. Things look very good now. Have patience in this time and make long-term plans. So many of you have heard me say that, well, first of all, what I feel about threes, um, that they tend to indicate that there's some sort of party of three, which doesn't have to be romantic, but often is, especially with the three of fire or wands, because the wands are phallic. Um, so it doesn't have to be. But yeah, I get a sense when I start to see threes of some sort of party of three, and then we determine whether or not that seems to be a romantic party of three, one that's continuing at present, one that's over, but we have energetic ties, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But right now I have this devil card or ego opposite the three of fire, just so we're reminded of that. So it could be very well that someone is bound, um, to one of these situations of three a love triangle a third wheel something the devil is back 
opening out to the world and another three. Archangel Michael, a job well done, joy, contentment, and gratitude, the path toward enlightenment. So maybe this is recently having gone through a very long relationship and ended it and coming out. We'll get, we'll see when, you know, hopefully at least when we uh, lay the cards, but the world is about, because now I have the world opposite the devil, since the devil won't go away. Um, the world is about having survived like a long, grueling process. Ego is back. But opening now to the four of fire. Contentment, peace, and abundance. A happy home life. The successful completion of a project. I also saw, now looking at this, when I was shuffling the romance deck, free yourself, opposite wedding. So I did get to see wedding. And a lot of times while I'm shuffling for people, I don't even see it. Um... You know, just to give you an idea. But it was free yourself opposite wedding. And I'm, I thought, does this mean free yourself from a marriage? And now this could potentially be the same thing. It could be free yourself for marriage. Or it could be free yourself from marriage. Or both. Because we have this ego card opposite now the four of fire. On a more positive note, um, that three of fire, which... I said, you know, might be some sort of party of three, has progressed here to a four. And ego is back yet again. I'm just going to cut now. Letting on the Emperor, Archangel Michael. So somebody may be a fire sign, particularly in Aries. And it's also another force. So we had our four of wands, and now we have the Emperor here. Um, and though this also may be some sort of May-December sort of relationship. Like maybe somebody's older. In any case, the Emperor is all about organization and logic, structure and discipline, and leadership. Another thing positive about this is that we, you know, seem to be getting a lot of major arcana. So it's a lot of spirit here at the table with us. Um, joining the reading in more ways than one. Like even being part of the spread. And the overall energy is the queen of air. So one of you may be one or both embodying this energy. This could be me, um, you know, being impactful upon the, the union at this point right now. Um, somebody may have sun, moon, or rising, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, or be even be a cusper. Another three, uh, it's the Empress. So it's also more major arcana. Um, the Empress is all about productivity, creativity, fertility. Um, and fertility doesn't have to be, it can be in a met metaphorical sense. It can be like we're having a bunch of ideas. Um, again, we're really creative. We're really productive right now. We're abundant um, with all we need to get our, you know, jobs done, our projects done. Lavish abundance. Give birth to your dreams. Nurture yourself and others. And the night of fire. Passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless is the night of fire. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. So this is Prince Charming running this way for some reason. 
and it is him that is crowned by the empress. And in his subconscious, the sun and Archangel Uriel, happy outcome, brilliant new ideas that lead to success, have confidence in yourself. And I was just thinking about how Archangel Uriel was here the other day and I had never met him before. Um, I thought about that before this reading, having nothing to do with the reading, or at least I thought. So maybe something is going to come up. Archangel Uriel um, is God's light. His name means God's light and that's why he's here representing the sun. The sun for me um, gives me a real feeling of Leo um, only because the sun is Leo's um, ruling planet. But again, this could be a Sagittarius based on the Knight of Fire, or an Aries as well, uh, having seen the Emperor, and actually the Sun represents the sign of Sagittarius, not Leo, in the Tarot. Here we have the Dreamer and Archangel Metatron, a leap of faith. Follow your dreams, it leads to unexpected opportunities. So for me, again, <laughs> so this is more of a personal thing, Archangel Metatron represents the planet Mercury, which is the communication planet, um, which would represent air signs, and particularly Gemini as the great communicator of the Zodiac. Um, that may be, again, why the Queen of Air is here. Somebody having some Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. And it's more major arcana. So far, you got like all corners. We just need one here. We've got a fourth already. With renewal or judgment in Archangel Jeremiah. Review and evaluate. It's a favorable assessment of the facts. Time to move in a new direction. Now, judging by the sun and the night of fire, that would be a positive direction. And not only a positive direction, but from the masculine's perspective, that would be toward the feminine. And whoever had that um, light blue for the water, the king and queen of water is perhaps particularly a Scorpio, because that's what this uh, card represents. Number 13, release or death in the traditional tarot with Archangel Azrael. The end of a phase or situation. So similar to the world in that sense. But uh, release or death is also about spiritual transformation. And... It being time to move again in a new direction as the card atop it suggests. And I would say even as the dreamer suggests because the dreamer is about taking a leap of faith. Um, so that would be going into a forward moving direction, um, you know, and propelling yourself at it. You're crowned by the moon. So tons and tons of major arcana here. Um, the moon represents the sign of Pisces. So maybe not a Scorpio, maybe a Pisces could be either one um or a cancer it could still be a cancer archangel haniel is here now important psychic insights events behind the scenes release fears that hold you back so similar to the death card we're letting go of stuff with this card and similar to the queen of air as well the queen of air also lets go of stuff um but in addition to that both of us have a increased intuition and there may be things that we don't know that should become illuminated. What's done in the dark always comes to light, as they say. Because we have the moon and the sun in the same spread. That three of fire is back. Abundance. Things look very good. Have patience at this time. Make long-term plans. It's the root of the situation, this three of fire. Maybe whatever this three of fire is, is the sudden event that needs immediate attention that causes Prince Charming to take off running. At the heart of the matter is the queen of fire who's confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. Stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself. Assert your independence and creativity. So not unlike the Empress, uh, which it touches and is diagonal to, the Queen of Fire is all about creativity and abundance. And not, not unlike the Three of Fire either. All these cards um, are similar. And they can all 
indicate something similar because the queen of fire can be about mothering too, nurturing. The queen of fire is warm, right? She, she could be like a mother figure and she's over 30 at least. Um, whereas the knight may be somebody that's a little younger. Again, maybe this is a quote unquote May, December, um, relationship. I just want to see if we can get anything on the three. Okay, so perhaps it really is about money and financial things, material things, which is awesome. Um, as can be that devil, at least in part, uh, that ego card that we saw in the beginning that would not go away. It can, in part at least, be about somebody focusing on money, just really trying to um, bring some in. And this would indicate that they were successful in that. A very happy family life. Financial security and finding the magic and the little things in life and here we see a woman an, um, an angelic with her two little angelic babies and it looks like they as a family have a guardian angel as well behind them this card the ten of earth or Ten of Pentacles, um, can also be like being born into like an established family, a financially secure family. And I was reminded of that when I looked at those babies. Let me pull one more. Okay. It's positive. It's that three of fire, again, increasing to the four of fire. Wonderful. Wonderful. So what direction, in what direction are you going? I'd say forward moving, very positive. You have nothing but um, court cards, the four of wands, which is like the commitment card, wedding card and all that, and major arcana. You've got six major arcana cards here and a nine card spread. So I'd say it's, <laughs> this is progressing um nicely and you have the quintessential divine feminine of the tarot at the heart of the matter what's with this empress though when i go to check the empress the devil comes back when i go to clarify the empress mm. What I am thinking I don't, what I'm thinking I don't like about it is that the devil, at least for me, it doesn't say it on this card, um, but can also represent like, like hypersexuality, hypersexual activity. And I'm not saying that that's a negative thing always. But thinking about sex and the empress together, like sex and... Fertility, sex and fertility, sex and pregnancy or something. And then being diagonal to release or death and Scorpio, which is a sign of, of the Zodiac that also sort of represents sexuality as well. I'm going to take one more. There is the seven of air is the next card. There will be an indication of someone trying to steal the joy. Plans and revision. There's more going on than meets the eye. Well, perhaps that's some of what's going to be illuminated soon with the moon and the sun. And the next one is in reverse. So it's not even for me to look at. It. I will recap the masculine is the empress the knight of fire and the sun with the empress being clarified by ego or the devil and the seven of air which represents someone trying to take something from you or in a love reading a romantic sense distrust distrust or risk 
there could be risky business going on here um, between this devil and this empress. Together, they're an 18 or a 9, like the moon. So together, they would make an 18 or a 9, and then plus the 0, this is 9. So this, this row up here could represent an ending of whatever was going on here. Or it could mean born something new being born of this situation perhaps someone new being born of this situation now yet again on the positive side down here what we have moving up further up 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 is all super super positive right we've got the sun the four of fire um and the ten of earth with which we clarify the three of fire, which could have been very well just about putting one's stakes in the ground and preparing a life. And then we have uh, death, which some people don't like, but I love. I mean, uh, I think transformation is awesome. I have butterflies tattooed on me. I'm like all about it. <laughs> um, and at the end of the day, this is, I mean, people would kill for this spread. <laughs> To have all this major arcana and this court cards and the four of wands. They really, really would. I, I just keep getting drawn back to because I'd like to more clearly know what this is. And I'm hoping that as we go along, we will get that additional clarity. So, yes, let me finish recapping so you know what you have here. So, the masculine is um, Empress, the Knight of Fire, and the Sun. Again, with Empress clarified by Ego and the Seven of Air. The feminine is the Dreamer. Renewal and release and at the heart of the matter, the moon, the queen of fire and the four of fire. So if we get that card talking about red flags, our red flags are gorgeous. So it's the knight of fire, the queen of fire and the four of fire. If it has anything to do with the cards on the table. I'm not even going to put these too far. So the romance cards, again, beginning with the energy of free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. And opening to flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. Free yourself is back. Opening to honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. So this could be kind of literal for you. It's possible that you're going to spend some time together on the 11th and or 12th. Um... Those are the two days that we'll be seeing and feeling the most um, the moon coming through. And there's a moon here in this picture. And you had the moon um, as one of the cards that was crowning you in your original spread. So um, I would not be surprised if this moon meant a lot for your union. Honeymoon is back. Opening now to forgiving and learning, which may explain that seven of air. All right, we have, we're forgiving and learning because there was some distrust between us. That's a possibility. As you release, and here's that word release again, um, as in what the Scorpio was doing, what the Queen of Air was doing, releasing and letting go of things that don't serve us. And as you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Honeymoon is back. Opening now to codependency, which is just like that devil card, basically. It's being um, codependent upon something, someone, someplace, a combination of those. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. The devil can or ego can easily um, mean that someone is addicted to something. And that something can be sex. Remember, I was getting stuck on that. Like, what's this fertility in connection with... What could possibly be hypersexual acti activity diagonal to, um, you know, the sign that is known for hypersexual activity in the Zodiac? Maybe there's something to that. So that this could be a sex addiction. addiction or um, I've been hearing a lot lately. And this is going to sound 
well, I don't care. <laughs> but I've been hearing a lot lately, not specific to you. Um, but certainly I was feeling for members of the collective. That song by um, ASAP Rocky, Fucking Problems. I love bad bitches. That's my fucking problem. Like a lot of these people are connected. I'm not going to say men because um, it's not necessarily all men. Um, it may be all masculines. That's a possibility. Uh, but all, all of the divine masculines are not male. Some of them may have some sex addictions. This may be one of them. But on the positive side, honeymoon is back. And also what is positive is what's going on in the cosmos um, is leading people to let go of these things. And actually the moon, speaking of honeymoon and the moon, um, this full moon in Cancer is very interesting um, because I've been following Gemini and the two sort of star clusters um, that make up the two twins of Gemini have both been very prevalent. The last full moon that we had, which was the last one of the year of uh, 2016, um, and the last one in general for us, was the Gemini full super moon. This next moon is a Cancer full moon. However, there will be days um, in the coming week where the moon sort of sits in Gemini. So to me, it's like Lilithu, who is a Cancer, um, like confronting Isis, kind of. But Isis at the same time having like, you know, having sort of like an upper hand because she's been sitting there in her divine glory since her full super moon. You know, she's been just chilling. So now it's like, you know, um, little two pulling up on the scene and the two of them there. And what's happening as a result of all this, as, you know, the constellation, Gemini, the twins being prevalent and, um, you know, Gemini being where the moon decides to rest and the full moon being a cancer full moon. What it's doing is it's pushing people to let go of things. It's pushing people to face um, emotions. It's pushing people to be honest and quite a few of my viewers I posted this on my Facebook and they you know a lot of them commented people that I hadn't even realized had experienced this they commented too I was saying you know I from what I hear a lot of people um are losing their seven of swords people they're walking out of people's lives and I started to get you know many of my viewers saying that it was going on with them too and I even had like really major situations like a um, gay male, for example, that didn't want anybody to know he was a gay male is being a gay male. Hallelujah. You know, he, he's leaving the woman that he was messing with or whatever, um, or he has left her already. Um, another one of my loyal viewers, her divine masculine would never disconnect his ex-wife from his Facebook. He would not unfriend her. He finally did. And so this is going to continue and it's going to be en masse, um, I think more so next week than this week because of this full moon. So that could be something that's going to go on in your life where and that could be the sudden event that causes Prince Charming to take off the night um, of fire. That all of a sudden he's got to, you know, illuminate all this stuff that was in the dark and he's got to fix it and he's got to release. He's got to clear away what doesn't work for him. People will be letting go of addictions suddenly, something that they couldn't shake for a long time. All of a sudden it's going to be done. Boom. Cold turkey. That's it. Um, we should we should see a lot of really, really awesome movement in general uh, in the collective, whether someone is in a divine union or not next week in any case for you this could be the one and you already met the romantic partner you seek
the overall energy is flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. Masculine is separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. I'm getting that that's not like accurate. Like the separation is now. And I don't know if this, uh, we, I didn't talk to her about this. So I don't know this to be true or not. But I'm feeling like the separation is now and will be over soon. That's why it's like here in his present. Surrounding him is passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. And in his subconscious, attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. Wedding is back <laughs> here at the feminine. This situation involves marriage. Surrounding her romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. But you must let go of control issues. Allow this situation to unfold naturally. Maybe the Capricorn, the, um, the ego, the devil, maybe that was about you. Maybe you were the one that is feeling bound to something, feeling ego, feeling like you have to, you know, control the situation and force pieces of it, aspects of it. You know, like push it in the direction you feel it should go. You got to just let things flow. Crowning. And you should release your ex as well. So there is a third person. Um, at least on one side, if not both. The time has come to clear your energy. And if you're waiting, if you were waiting to find out, well, let me see if there's anything really to this situation with me and the guy before I leave. Um... I mean, that's a way to do it, but that would definitely be a control issue. That's not the way like spirit would have us do it. Um, were it not for our free will, we're supposed to take a risk, right? Have faith in the universe. We feel like we're being guided to go towards someone else. Um, you know, and that we're being guided to leave a current spouse or someone else that, you know, with whom we're cohabitating or have a, you know, really serious relationship um, long-term relationship or whatever the case may be, we're being, we're feeling guided to leave them. We're supposed to leave them. We're not supposed to wait and see what's going on with somebody else. The thing about unconditional love is that it is exactly what it sounds like. It's love without condition. Not I love them, um, if they love me. And so I'll leave this other person if that's the case. No, I love this other person. So I'm leaving this one because I don't love that one. And then whatever happens with this one happens. Or doesn't. That's what we're supposed to do. I'm not chastising you. Oh, that's this is human nature. Um, you know, but pre ascension particularly. But it's not what spirit would have us do. At the root, however, is a worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. So spirit will fix this. Again, we have um free will to an extent, and the rest is up to them anyway. Give, you're being asked to give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership, and not just you, I mean, you both are uh, being guided to do that. And that may be why he's uh, needing some time to himself to like get himself together. Notice this separation card sits in the same position where that other clusterfuck was like, you know, that, that <laughs> area of what's going on here is where the separ separation is. So I think he needs, um... He needs a moment, too, to figure out what that was. You know, like, how can anybody else, if he doesn't even know what he has going on there, he's got to fix that. And this is in a funny position, too. It's here on top of um, release. And you, where release would have been, the death card, is where you're being told to let go, which is to, quote, unquote, release. Right? Um, to clarify, release your ex, speaking of release, I pulled children. So now children is here where, as again, 
in part the clusterfuck was and where I was confused about what was happening with the empress. Um, but maybe these are children that are already existing on one side or another or both. And that's why people are feeling trapped in old relationships. They're feeling trapped in relationships with the child's other parent. But you deserve love. You are lovable. So you have the right to leave that person. This is not even for you. So yeah, these are the cards to clarify yours. Um, and it's shared. It's, so it's not just you. It's not just him. And there's no room for blame in divine unions either. That's another thing about them. Um, we kind of just all have to take responsibility. Let's get some advice on this. And that's why free yourself showed up, um, you know, as I was shuffling too, because it wasn't attributed to one person or another. It's like both. The overall energy um, is now past life relationship because I reshuffled the cards in order to get like fresh advice. You have known each other before. I'm going to do the same here with the um, angel cards. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a little more with the angel cards because we had all that. We had that big clump of major arcana. So I want to give it a real shuffle open to the seven of water, just so you know, which is about choices and one complex decision in particular that has to be made. And maybe that is, um, do I leave my mate? Do I leave my mate? You know, whoever it is, is it's attached. Um, what do I do about my children? What example do I show them? That would be a complex decision. But, you know, there's the need to do research and to stop procrastinating, to look into maybe some, you know, how separation agreements might be able to work. And this card similarly can have to do with your children and a past life relationship or a soulmate relationship, it can have dual meaning. Memories from history or childhood, so it can be your own childhood as well. Issues regarding children, again, like do I leave their parent, their other parent, their mate, um you know, as my mate, do I end the romantic situation or the energetic situation that I have with this other parent and just really cut all that out, release all of it and bring it down to the bare, bare minimum of, um, friendship and co-parenting, you know, nothing else. That's what this card can be about. And again, it's the past life relationship card of the tarot too. So dual meaning for you, which is, you know, nice, because you already have that as an overall energy here. But now we have this seven and this six, which equal 13 or death or release um, in the tarot, opposite one another, for one thing. And we have perhaps a decision having to be made about children and or a past life or soulmate relationship. Seven of Water is back. I'll go one more. And back to the world in this long, perhaps grueling and or difficult and or arduous process. Or perhaps that's a potential of relationship. Could very well have been a relationship or be a relationship that's heading toward, you know, separation, divorce, some sort of ending. A job well done. Joy, contentment, and gratitude the path toward enlightenment. That's what happens when we listen to our guidance from the universe. It may, you know, be a painful process, but when we survive it, when we make it out, um, we are rewarded. And again, threes are not just about <laughs> potential parties of three. They're about abundance. And when it's a major arcana, it's abundance from the universe, uh, particularly abundance, perhaps, you know, being granted to you by Archangel Michael, the Prince of the Seraphim. That's pretty awesome. Ooh. 
The overall energy now is the Knight of Water, who is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals. The need to balance emotions. An invitation to a social event is also a possibility. So I want to pull you from here. Um, one for each of you. You know what? I'll just shuffle a little bit because I already shuffled them. Oh, isn't that awesome? The overall energy is now love. Love, the night of water, past life relationship. Now we're get, we're cooking with gas, like for real. So the masculine is being guided to embrace this love. See the heart there? That's the direction he's being pushed in. The night of fire is being pushed in. And you're being guided to listen um, to your guidance. You may want to listen to some meditative sounds. And certainly to your intuition, right? Your personal intuition with all that water that we saw here. Masculine is now the queen of earth, or his advice is at least. And that's to be thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible, and to make time for those around him. Take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. So whatever he had coming on over here, that was a challenge. He's being guided to, you know, take a deep breath and work through it like, you know, like a man, like a grown man. Calm, collected, cool, warm. Even though he's a queen, <laughs> he's going to do it like a grown man. And you, dear, are the queen of water yet again who is still tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. This is all about relationships developing to a new level. Okay, so it was worth waiting for. It's happening now. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. This is a card about nurturing. From the romance angels to the masculine, guess what else is back? Honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. So I think around uh, 111 and or 112. You should see some very positive um, movement in your situation. And what will help to bring that about and to capture it, to harness it and hold it there tight, enjoy it, embrace it, love it, is to recapture romance. Allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. I hope that you got your answers and that you enjoyed your reading, dear. Namaste, angel.